Hiya folks, we're going to try and clean up the Piaggio engine. See you in a minute. Right, okay then, well, what we're going to try and do now is just give this engine a bit of a clean up. I want to get this prepared to go back in the motorbike. And I've already taken off the rear mudguard and the air filter box, so I'm just going to remove the carb now. I will take the carb bowl off and clean the jets out and stuff like that. So just before I do any of that, though, I'm going to have to take it off uh, so that I clean up the engine casings. I'm not going to be doing too much with the engine casing, just cleaning it down, get all the grit and road, road uh, salt off it and all that lot. Of so let's start taking the carb off. Right, so I've taken the air box off already, and all I've got now is this little Phillips screw here, which sits underneath the... Um, the choke actuator, and I'm just going to undo this screw here that holds it onto the um, little rubber inlet tube there, as you can probably see. And this should just pull out of there. Let me just undo a, that clip. Again, I don't really want to break anything here because I don't really want to have to renew parts, things like rubber uh, seats and stuff like that. So just a gentle pull should release that. There we go. There's the carb now. And that's all we've got there now. So that's the carb bowl there, as you can see, which looks to be plastic in this case. So um, I'll obviously have to remove the screws underneath, take this off, and um, that'll allow me to get to the uh, jets inside and give it a good blowout and clean out, as well as the float bowl. So that just leaves the two stroke tube to undo, just by removing this little clip here. There we go, just pull the two stroke tube off. One thing to remember here, when you um, refit the two-stroke two pipe on the uh, carburetor, is to ensure that you've got the tube filled up with fuel, so that you don't run the risk of running the bike without an oil supply until the pipe fills up. So always make sure that. Here we go. So that's out of now. That's one complete unit. I'll put that to one side now, and I'll just carry on cleaning this up and uh, you can probably go on time, that's why I do that. Okay, then that's given me something a bit better to work with now. It's not as dirty as it was and greasy. Still needs a bit more cleaning, but it'll do for now. And one other thing I've got to tackle is this uh, brake mechanism, which is all seized up. As you can see, I can barely pull the brakes on or off. And as you know, they were stuck on in the, the uh, previous bike video. So I'm going to have to take the brake shoes out here and obviously like, uh, lubricate up the pins or whatever with some... Uh, copper slip grease or something like that so I'm gonna to have to start stripping this down now and uh, see uh, obviously where the problem lies now again uh, the shoes don't look to be in too bad a condition so I'll probably reuse them if I can I know we've got what looks like two strong springs there just by inserting a screwdriver there I can see that we can lift the shoes out of their seatings there so that's probably going to be the way to go initially I'll work on one side first here we go. I've got my safety glasses on, by the way, because you never know with springs where they're going to end up. I'll just ease them up gently. There we go. Very strong springs, then. You have to be very, very careful with them. There we go. So that's the springs out of their, their situations. And again, I'm noting the way the... Uh, springs came out well anyway so I know for basically that that goes in there like that and they're gonna sit in that way so that's what I'm looking at there so I put them to one side and technically speaking now this mechanism is what I assume is actually seized up as you can see that should be floating nice and easily in and out 
and I can't move that. So that's where it's actually stuck, this bush mechanism here. If I come around the back there, there is some sort of pin mechanism there where I would expect that you withdraw this after undoing a clamp there by the looks of it. I can't actually see where the clamp is. I'll just pull that fully one way. Oh, there we go. There's a little what looks like an eight mil nut on there. I don't know whether you can see it in there. So that obviously slackens off, which should open up this arm. And that means that this should be able to pull out. But I'm going to expect this to be very stiff. So I'm going to get a little socket, put it on there. Just undo that pinch bolt there and hopefully withdraw that. And we'll see that that should be all sticky. Oh, that's an eight mil. Is it an eight mil? Yeah, it is an eight mil. Why is it every tool I want is not available? <laughs> Yeah, look, this is what I mean, look. I want the little wrench, which should be sitting in there. Not that one, not that one, that one. And it's missing. <sighs> now normally that's why I always put things back where I get them from, but now is it in the drawers? No. <sighs> so now I don't know where my little wrench is. Did I have it in the past? I don't know. And I need an eight mil, a T-bite to go in there. My eight mils go down to a quarter inch. That's the three eighths drive, which doesn't go down to eight mil. Now knowing me, I've put it somewhere. I've used it. It should be here. That's just all Vespa parts. That's the work area. I'm not at it out here. Gary, if you're watching this, have you had it? I know you've been working in here, doing a little bits and pieces, but... Uh... Just here. I've got another little socket set. Forgot about this one. Ah, this will do. I can... Just fall back on this little set here, look. How about that? Lucky I've got more than one thing. Let's see if we can get this bolt undone. All right, okay. So, yep. Undo that pinch bolt there. Now, I don't know whether it's one of these where you have to take right the way out, but I will take it out anyway. See, look at the state of the corrosion on that thing, look. Now, I can't actually remove that, but what that should do now is enable me to perhaps lever up this. Easier said than done. Now I've got the brake shoes out of the way. I don't mind squirting a bit of uh, WD-40 or penetrating fluid in here. And what I also will do is to... Um, just give it a few taps because sometimes that can free up. But again, trying to bring back bikes that are um, have been sat up for a long time uh, to get them back to a roadworthy condition. These are the sort of things that you can come against, come up against, and uh, can give you all the little problems. So you just got to know how to get over them, basically. getting looser so maybe the lubrication is getting through and sometimes you've just got to persevere and just uh, change your form of attack sometimes and just try a few different tricks of the trade or tricks that you may know of that could have worked before so like the hammer was one way but now I want to get a bit more leverage and move it backwards and forwards so I can use the mole grips now, and as you can see, that is now making it move a lot easier, although I still do want to get it out. And what I'm doing now, as I'm turning, I'm also pulling up as well, hoping to withdraw that pin. And as you can see, it's starting to come up. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's coming off there now, so it's now off of that. 
look so I know that if I take these off now and maybe hold on to the flats not the top but I don't want to bend that in so just take the mole grips take them down so that we can grab hold of the flats on the uh, pivot pin like that and work it up at the same time I'm pulling up at the same time you see maybe get the screwdriver in there just tease it up as well there we go come on here we go and just release and what you'll find when I pull this out so as you can see there where the plating is worn away or come off and caused a little bit of surface rust just to appear there so what I'll do I'll polish that with uh, some very very fine wet and dry paper or even a scotch bright pad and then I'll uh, obviously lubricate that there's a little old seal there as well as you can probably see there so I've just got to be careful about that as well so yeah there was our stickiness problem that bit there I would suggest so um, in an ideal world I would replace that but um, I'm not going to do it in this occasion but what you can do sometimes is just check what, whether it's rust or just a bit of a uh, seepage which sometimes can happen just by with a blade look because you'll probably find that cleaning it up might make sure make it all right so I'm just scratching that bit off I'll get a scotch bright pad now I'll just get a bit of lube on it a bit of WD will do the job for the moment get hold of the pin and just give it a good twist just to see if it will come up there we go so I personally think that that will be all right it feels nice and smooth there's a slight pit in there but uh, I think that's going to be all right so I'll do the same with one of these I'll roll it up thinly pull it in that little channel down there with some lubrication clean that up and hopefully then that should be the job so that's gonna be this my next port of call so I'll see you in a minute So I've just given that bracket, the uh, actuator arm, uh, a sandblast and I've just given it a quick coat of paint. I'm going to give that two or three coats, let that first one dry first of all. And that's the sort of thing that takes a lot of time. When you're doing um, sort of restorations or stuff like this, you've got to be able to tinker about, you see. You can't get everything done at once. You have to do something, have something else planned to do something else while that bit's getting dry, for example, like that. And uh, that's the way you carry on. So it's a long-term project, realistically. You know, if, if you're doing bits and pieces here and there, there's always something you can do. That's the point I'm trying to make. Even though these are only little things, these are things that had to be done uh, to get the job back to a satisfactory, usable, rideable condition. I couldn't have left this like this. But in the same breath, I didn't need to paint it. But why you've got it off, why you've stripped it down, that's all part of restoration. You know, you, you, you actually do this sort of stuff. If you was taking your vehicle to a garage for example because it had a, a brake sticking on like this they wouldn't go to this hassle of taking it off sandblasting it cleaning it just for the sake of the actuator arm they just probably put it back straight back on so you doing it yourself it's always better if you can do it yourself you'll be paying premium dollar if you get someone else to do this sort of work but with a few small hand tools and a, I'm lucky enough to have a sandblasting cabinet it makes life so much easier if you're in the restoration game or you're, you know, you're doing your own maintenance and stuff like that. Because even if you're taking bits off of a car, for example, uh, as well as a motorbike or any other thing really that gets rusted or weathered or whatever, by giving it a clean, giving it a repaint, you know, you're doing a job properly basically, and that's what restoration uh, and preventative maintenance is all about. Anyway, so I've now got this pin here, which you know, which I've cleaned up, and I'm going to put some copper slip grease in it. Now if you remember first of all when I took this out this thing had seized up solid and let me show you what it does now. 
So as you can see at the moment, the pin is very, very clean and dry at the moment. There's our original hole, which I've actually cleaned out with a uh, scotch Bright pad and some lubrication. And if I put that in now, as you can see, it falls straight in and look how easy that turns now, look. So no problems whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is just to put a preventative smear of uh, grease on there. I'm gonna be using copper slip grease and that O-ring, as you can probably see there, that stops any grease entering from the shaft entering into the actual brake area. So that's what that little O-ring is for there. Always make sure you put that back on or make sure there's one on there. So all I'm literally going to do, and again, it's basically just to keep fluid out, water out, to be honest with you. So all I'll do is just literally lubricate that shaft like that and literally just insert it. And then I'm gonna take the surface off again. There's that ring there, look, you can see it's pulled down with, uh, with the gasket. So all I'll do is just clean that surface face off could actually poke some in there like that so it pushes in and uh, literally just insert that now I'm happy now that that's going to do a job I'll just wipe around the seal there just to make sure that there's no residue inside and I'll be totally happy with that once I can get that bracket back on the back there as you know which I can't do at the moment because it's being painted and I'll be very happy that that's okay. I've cleaned all this out now, as you can probably see, that was full of corrosion and uh, road dust and stuff like that. So that's all been cleaned out with a, a, a brake cleaner fluid and dried off and blown out with the air gun as well. So that's all nice and clean in there now. Once I put the brake shoes back in, this will be serviced and will be a, a complete finished job. So that's that part of the job done. Okay then, so, I'm just gonna take a quick look at this carb while I've got it here. As you know, it's very dirty on the outside. I'll just give it a bit of a spray off first with some carb cleaner, just to get rid of all the external grease and gunk that's uh, accumulated over the years. Just let it run off. It's just a precaution more than anything, this. And uh, I always have plenty of this blue roll to hand as well. Now again, I've got a, an ultrasonic cleaner. I could actually put this in there, but um, I probably won't in this case. I know the thing was running pretty well just before we took it apart. And uh, all I'm going to do is just to remove the uh, float bowl at the bottom of the carb here. And that's just held on by two screws. Let's see if we can get you a bit nearer. Again, forgive me if you can hear a hissing in the background. I've left the um, compressor on it's just uh, discharging at the moment so this is just literally held on by two flathead screws as you can see there the bottom of the float bowl again I don't intend on doing a full carb strip on this nine times out of ten it's only going to be stuff in the float bowl or the jets need uh, cleaning out so just be careful here Now I'm pretty lucky here that we're totally clean in there. So I'm very, very happy with that. And as you can see, there's no sign of any residue or gunk there. We've got a gasket there, which I don't really want to disturb. I don't want to have to come uh, buy a new carb kit for it. So I'm going to literally just give that a squirt with carb cleaner. Bearing in mind, as I said to you, this has had no problems with it. I'm literally gonna just put that straight back. Just give that float bowl a bit of a clean out as well. Now, if it does give me trouble, I will take the car off and give it a full service, but uh, in this case, I'm not even gonna bother, as I said to you, because everything is absolutely spotless in there. So I'm just gonna put that back on and literally just pinch them screws back up again. I'll be happy that uh, this is gonna run no problem whatsoever. Because as I say, Gary did actually start it up before we stripped it down and it's been standing for years and years and uh, it started so, so easily. 
it wasn't running bad at the beginning or whatever I literally just stored it up so I'm not gonna go too mad there it's only a plastic float bowl as I said to you so just nip it up just till we pinch the gasket Get an external clean and I'll blow this off with the air hose as well uh, that actually gets rid of all this small stuff that you get right inside there sort of thing so uh, I'll do that and uh, I'll leave that for the moment and that's another little job out of the way for the moment right so just to show you Sunday afternoon I'm doing a little bit of tinkering about and uh, all I'll do is continue what I'm doing now. I'm going to give that another couple of coats of paint. Tomorrow I'm going to be down the unit uh, with Jimmy. We're going to do some work down there. So you may see another video from down there very shortly. I'm going to be working on the graphics for the uh, the uh, Trotter van. As you know, if you haven't seen them videos, do check out our car playlist. And there's about 30, 31 videos to date on a Reliant Regal van, Super Van 2, which is our Trotter van conversion. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this little video, just me tinkering about on a Sunday afternoon. And I'll see you in the next Piaggio video. And don't forget, we'll be hopefully getting this to the stage where we can get it back into the actual chassis. I've got the chassis home here now, and uh, we hope to be moving forward pretty swiftly now once we've refurbished a few more of these bits. Anyway, thanks very much. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and share our videos, and also hit that little bell next to the subscribe button, and that means every time I upload a video, you'll get a notification and you'll be first in to see it. Anyway, thanks very much. See you later. Bye for now.